Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome into the Wednesday edition of Inside the 20 with myself and Keith Niebuhr. We will do our absolute best to get as much recruiting intel to you with Inside the 20 Minute Mark. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live on 3. And I'm joined, as always, am by Mr. Keith Niebuhr. Keith, how about you, big dog? I'm good, man. No special guest today. Everybody's mm-hmm. stuck just listening to us two knuckleheads for, for 20 minutes. That's it. <laughs> You're always the special guest, Keith. You're oh, yeah. Special guest, Keith. Hey, uh, sure, sure, we've sure. got a lot. Hey, spring practice has begun. Recruits, the yeah. dead period is over, Keith. We're going to get to some of that. But before we do, we want to tell everybody that's been calling and asking me, hey, man, where can I get a new car? Where can I get a used car? Just been, we're just bombarded with questions about this. I've got the answer for you, folks. Caleb Schofield, Mike Patton Auto in LaGrange, Georgia. He is the man for you. Give him a call, 334-531-0996. He's got... The, the selection of new and used cars is fabulous, man. He's got new Ford, Lincoln, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Honda. Fantastic used car lot. All used cars must pass a multi-point inspection before they even put them on the lot, folks. They back all those used cars with free three-month, 3,000-mile warranties. The new vehicles come with a lifetime powertrain warranty, unlimited time, unlimited mileage. And even if you're not in the market for a car, you want 300, 300 extra bucks, Send them to Caleb, man. Referral fee. He'll give you $300. Caleb Schofield, Mike Patton Auto off Lafayette Parkway in LaGrange, Georgia, 334-531-0996. Whoo, Keith, the dead period is over. Yeah, man. The quiet period has begun, which means recruits can resume taking visits. Auburn has not slowed down. They didn't slow down after uh, after signing day in December. We saw a lot of visits in January. And... We're going to see a lot more in March, Keith. The uh, the second practice will be this afternoon, Wednesday afternoon. We're expecting a couple of guys there, even more on Friday, and then they'll just be trickling in and out all spring long. Keith, you, this morning you had on Auburn Live on 3. If you're not a member of Auburn Live on 3, we've got a fantastic deal right now, 10 bucks for four months. You can't beat it. Uh, or if you want to go uh, – Thirty dollars for an entire year, or, or until September. Either way, man, we we've got a uh, we've got great options for you. At Auburn Live on three. Keith, this morning had five storylines for recruiting. Five recruiting storylines in the yeah. spring. Talk to us about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously when you're writing stuff, you know, you're, you know, you keep it kind of compact. So on this show, we can elaborate a little bit. So you know, five things. You know, the first one everybody wants to know always. The minute you get one commit, is who's next, right? So. Auburn's at three commitments right now, the number 15 class in the country. Now, that's only seventh best in the SEC. Not a surprise there. So uh, Auburn picked up two commitments in February, four-star quarterback Walker White and four-star defensive back Jaden Moose. So they got three commitments, a lot of spots to fill. So who could be next? And, Jeffrey, I, I picked one guy, and there could be multiple guys, and you may have a different take on this, And but I think we're sort of on the same page. And I think Cole Pinkston is as well, our coworker. Uh, Joseph Phillips, the four-star linebacker from Booker T. Washington, just down the road in Tuskegee, great little town, uh, just uh, just west of Auburn, and he's got a lot of big big dogs after him, uh, including Alabama schools like that. But it seems like Auburn one is in a good spot right now, probably the catbird seat. Uh, you know, he's going to be there again in March, and he's going to go visit other schools too, as Chad Simmons reported today. Uh, but not only is he going to visit Auburn again, not only is Auburn in a good spot and has he developed a great relationship with that step? But he'd like to have a decision possibly by the end of March. So that fits within that March time frame. So to me, uh, that's a guy that Auburn's prioritized. That's a guy that loves Auburn. It's a mutual uh, affection there. And he's known to be making a decision, or at least the plan is, have a decision sometime this month. So to me, that's the guy to watch. Uh, Jeffrey, I think you probably agree, but there may be some other guys on your mind too. I don't know. I've got Martavius Collins, the four-star tight end, previously oh, yeah. committed to Alabama. I'm putting him on my watch list. He decommitted from Alabama shortly after or shortly before his visit to Auburn back in January. I feel like there was a reason for that, and I feel like Walker White is really pushing for this kid hard. And I I, I think I said it last week on the calling show. I don't think you decommit from Alabama unless you know what you're going to do next. Yeah, yeah that makes so, sense. So he he's a guy I am uh, I'm going to be keeping an eye on. I'm I'm s- certainly expecting him to return to Auburn this spring. Although I don't, I don't think he's nailed down a date yet. Uh, but uh, but he, he's a guy. How do you feel about Phillips? Oh, absolutely. Same, at, at any point, so, to me, Phillips is. And, and of course, I could be wrong here. I'm not. I'm just reading tea leaves. 
Yeah, I, I feel like he's Auburn's to lose, and regardless of when he announces, I, I would yeah. be shocked if he went anywhere other than Auburn. Anywhere, yeah, it definitely than. seems like it. And and Collins, I I'd agree with you on that. I mean, Auburn, we think is going to take, or they've said that the tight ends coach said, hey, they're probably going to take two tight ends, uh, and uh, they're working that state of Georgia hard. Georgia's got a lot of good tight ends this class, including Landon Thomas, the uh, the four star Georgia commit from down in Moultrie, right. Georgia. So they're going to be working a few of those guys. And what we've seen is. Uh, they're going to still go after guys, even if they're committed to other schools, even if those schools are Alabama and Georgia. Uh, so why is he no longer, why is Martavis Combs no longer committed to Alabama? There's varying opinions out there. Uh, you know, our reporters at On3 believe that it was a mutual parting. You know, we've, we've dealt with those at Auburn before. Sure. Sometimes things just, they, two sides just go their separate ways. That's almost irrelevant, though. What's relevant is he's no longer committed, not the why, because Auburn doesn't care about the why. They just know that he's no longer committed, and they want him. And if they want him, then that's all that really matters. So next, all right, next up, Jeff, uh, what new official visits are going to be set this month? Now, official visits can't take place in March, but they can start taking place April 1st for the rising senior class, the guys that are juniors now. So Auburn's going to be using this month to not only host prospects, but set up future official visits. Um as a program, it should be noted, you only get 56 spots, 56 visits. So um, Auburn could sign more than 25 again this year because of that two-year NCA window where they're going to allow you to go over 25 to catch up for COVID. And so you know if somebody sets an official visit, they've got strong interest in Auburn. And if Auburn accepts that visit, they've got strong interest in that kid. So that's something to really watch. Now, April 8th, spring game, that fits within the window. That's the A-Day weekend. Could Auburn be hosting official visits? Jeffrey, you and I have spoken to some people. We don't think they're going to make a big deal out of that for, for official visits. Right. They most likely will have, host them later. One official visit, I'll let you elaborate on that if you want. Uh, one official visit that we know of, only one has been set as of right now that we know of, and that is uh, three-star offensive tackle Egan Boyer, who's from just north of Charlotte, North Carolina, and he's going to officially visit June 16th through 18th. 18th. But again, as kids start rolling through in March, they're going to visit, uh, they're going to get home, they're going to talk about it, or while they're on the visits, if, if their interest is mutual, then they're going to start setting up official visits. That's going to start happening soon. We're already seeing more and more of it in recent weeks, Jeff. Yeah, I, and I thought that was really interesting that Auburn will not push for official visits this spring or, or you know, setting up official visits early. We're going to save those for later. Keith, I thought you made a great point as far as official visits, man. The one thing I think you you hear from recruits all the time, it, you know, of course I'm interested in Auburn, but how how big is Auburn interested in, or how much is Auburn interested in those guys? And if if they're bringing those guys in for official visits, you know, there's got to be serious, legit, mutual interest from both parties. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that says a lot. So for Egan Boyer, who came to Auburn's junior day, he's six 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 seven two sixty five. He's pretty lean, uh, but obviously he's still young. These guys are still juniors in high school. But Auburn uh, likes him. He's going to come back, Keith. I think he told you for a for a spring yeah. practice, and yeah. then come back in June for an official right. visit. Well, so. there you go. So the interest is pretty strong there. In fact, that was the only official visit he had set up when I spoke to him last week. That was it, just Auburn. So and same um, for Auburn. You, you know, we're trying to read tea leaves too. You know, we've got new people working at Auburn. They don't know us that great. We they don't we don't know them that great. So uh, the level of trust has to be developed over time, obviously as we try to, you know, source and get, get information. But uh, next up, Jeffrey, you know, what type of feedback, that's a big storyline. What type of feedback are the prospects going to give during these March and, and April, but, but March specifically, because that's the month we're talking about visits in January. It was kind of like, Hey, Hugh freeze or Josh Aldridge, the linebackers coach or Jake Thornton, the O-line coach, they came by my school. I got to say hello, talk to them for 30 seconds, but that January visit, that, that a lot of these kids took um, either in mid-January or maybe that junior day, January 28th, was a chance to really, for the first time, have extensive in-person conversations with these staff, with these staffers. Now, sure, they had talked on the phone, texted, direct, met, direct message, Zoomed, FaceTime, all that stuff. But first time in person, really, really deep in person. Because when Hugh Freeze comes to a school, he can't sit there and have a 45-minute conversation with somebody. So that was big. But this is kind of taking that next step, Jeffrey, because you and I have seen this through the years. These kids, they get to go to practice. They're pulled out into the huddle. They're right there with the coaches, like right in the, the 
the, the center of the action. If you're an offensive lineman, you are literally right there. They're going to show you all the drills they're doing. You're going to get to see your potential future coach working one-on-one -on -one with his guys. And then as a group, uh, you're going to get to see the coordinators in action. You're going to get to see Hugh Freeze in action. And, uh, and not only that, uh, now we don't know how this staff's going to do things, but most staffs, uh, at least with their top price prospects, will bring them into team meetings. So, if, Jeffrey, if you and I are two linebacker targets, which would be kind of funny to see, we would get to see we'd get to go into the team meetings and, and hang out with Cam Riley and Wes Steiner uh, and those guys, and then also watch the coach do his chalk talk up there with with the with the players. So that's invaluable. What is this guy that could be coaching me? What's his personality like? How does he coach? How do his players respond to him? All that stuff. So they're going to get to do that. And then we get the reactions afterwards. What did it mean to them? Did it click with them? Did they see that they could mesh with that guy, Jeffrey? It's, it, it's an important time of year now for these visits, from, the, from just from that point of view. Very important. And I will say this, getting these guys in early in the spring, I think is important too, because now you've, you're making the first impression on these guys. They're not going to Alabama and Georgia and then come in here. Yeah. Um, the, 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 so to get these guys, and because I'm sure that first college practice that they attend, that's, that's not one they're going to forget. They're going to remember how it felt, what they saw, who talked to them. So I, I think it's big for Auburn to get these guys in this week. We we don't expect a, a a big group today at today's but but Fridays is going to be very very big. We've already confirmed some guys there over live on three, including uh, four star defensive back Ricardo Jones. Keith, number four, I thought you had a yeah. I, I love this one. Well, you know, can Auburn gain momentum? I, I wonder if you even read it. That's the funny thing. I, yeah, I wonder if you're just saying yeah, number four is really uh, <laughs> no. But can Auburn gain momentum, more momentum with with in state recruits? Can yeah. they keep it going? Yeah, uh, it seems like that's why I love it. I get these tongue twisters, but it seems like we've seen. So, look, look. I mean, they were not getting Keldrick Falk in the last cycle, four star defensive end who was committed to FSU, and then they got him. They were not getting Sylvester Smith, a four-star safety, who was going to Tennessee, and then they got him. So it made a late push for Tony Mitchell, who ended up signing with Alabama as a, as a defensive back, five-star kid. But there was some momentum gained. All right, now look, it, it was uh, it, it didn't take much to 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 improve on you know the last couple of cycles, but momentum seems to be picking up. Like they're they're in it with more guys in state than the last couple of cycles. It feels that way anyway. Now we're gonna see. Now of the three commitments, it should be noted, two of them are in state kids and they're both four star defensive backs, Amon Lane and Jay Lewis. So that's and Malik Altry, twenty twenty five. That's right. Uh, that, that's right. Malik the momentum Autry, you're talking Malik. about uh, yeah. signing Keldrick Falk, Sylvester Smith, yes. that carried over into January and getting these yeah. top 2024 uh, in-state kids on campus, raving about the, the staff in this in, in this program, and then picking up you, – you picked up uh, yeah. Malik Autry, 2025 four-star defensive lineman, and then 2024 uh, Jaden Lewis. Sorry, Keith, keep going. No, no, no problem, no problem. Uh, they've made a big effort, a big emphasis on getting – on turning this thing around in state and getting to know the prospects and getting to know their coaches. And by the way, I believe yes. in March, they're going to have a coaching clinic. You know, every school, every big program like an Auburn has a coaching clinic. And that's going to be another chance for Hugh Freeze, again, former high school coach, uh, to kind of get to know the high, the prominent high school coaches throughout the state. So that's significant too. But, you know, uh, they're involved with a lot of good players in this cycle. And, you know, Jeffrey, their nemesis, their two, one from the East and one from the West, that's who they're going to have to beat out again for the top guys. It's not going to change. It's going to be Alabama and Georgia. Yeah, Clemson will come in and get a guy. And Penn State's had some success. And Florida could maybe get a guy. But mainly, you got to beat out those two guys, okay? Uh, but they're battling, and they battled since Hugh Freeze got there. Right now, they're working hard to flip four-star Georgia linebacker commit Demarcus Riddick of Chilton County. Now, Cole Pinkston, again, of Auburn Life, went and visited him a week or two ago and really got the vibe that, yes, Auburn is in this. If it's not Georgia at the end of the day, it very well could be Auburn. He's already visited once. He's going to come back. He'll come back in the spring. He'll come back for an official visit. So they're making progress there. And I'm just naming a couple guys. But another guy to watch, Cam Coleman, the receiver out of Phoenix City oh, Central. Yeah. Oh, now, yeah. that's an area – I mean, the, the, the Auburn's had so much heartache at that school, let's be honest. Uh, they've lost guys to to Bama, then <laughs> they've lost the receivers, Justin Ross and EJ Williams to Clemson. Well, it turns out this guy may end up being better than any of those guys. Uh, Cam Coleman now now ranked number 20th in the country for on three, but a receiver that Auburn really likes. He really likes Auburn. 
Marcus Davis, the new receivers coach, that was the first receiver in the 2024 class that he offered upon arriving at Auburn. So, Jeffrey, you know, Perry Thompson, they're yeah. working on him, the four-star Bama receiver commit. Uh, Jordan Ross, four-star edge from the Stavia Hills, they're working on him. Jeremiah Beeman, four-star defensive lineman from Birmingham Parker. Traveris Banks, there's a guy they got a shot with. Four-star safety out of Northridge High School, north of Tuscaloosa. Kevin Riley, Tuscaloosa County, four-star running back. Auburn's in the mix with him. Mario Craver, four-star receiver from a great program that I love, Clay Chalkville. Uh, they're in it with him. Bradley Shaw, I believe, is visiting Auburn today, I believe. Uh, that is a four-star uh, – hold on a sec. Sorry, that we're getting text messages. That's a four-star linebacker from Hoover. So there's your top ten right there. Auburn's in it with all but maybe two of those guys, right? And so uh, last year, they really weren't in it with too many of the guys in the top 10. So, Jeff, they're making headway. They just got to take the next couple of steps. I mean, headway's headway, and it's great. You still got to sign guys, yep. though. You got to start getting these guys. If Auburn's going to get out of this hole, they got to start winning some of these battles, particularly in state, Jeffrey. Yeah. yeah, and not just being the final two or three. You got to win. You, you've got to yeah. beat these guys. Cole, uh, Keith, that we, you talked about Joseph yeah. Phillips being on your commit watch. Cole yeah. just now. Uh, informing us that Joseph Phillips is in Auburn today for an unofficial visit. He will be at practice. Well, that's a guy they love, and they identified him early. And, you know, Auburn offered him when he had zero stars, and now he's a four-star and, you know, kind of a freaky-looking athlete, big body, you know, big, long, all that stuff you're looking for out of, out of his position. Uh, so, you know, look, as, as the top in-state targets visit in March, we're going to get a more clear picture of their recruitments. We're going to know, all right, they going into April, they're still in it, or going to April, they're not in it anymore. But, I, Jeffrey, I, you're getting the same vibe I am. It feels like they're in it with a lot a lot of these guys. Now, at the end of the day, Alabama's Alabama, though. And Georgia, having won two championships in a row, is now going to be able to come over and, and battle whenever they want. So it's going to take a lot of work. But there's a new energy, and, and if you're an Auburn fan, you hope it's a new day. Absolutely. I think the fall will go a long way in, in either continuing that momentum or, 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 or losing it. I think, yeah. uh, you know, I don't think anybody has high expectations, uh, unrealistic expectations for this first year, but I, you, you show, you show some prom, you show some promise, show some improvement, give people some hope, some signs of what's to come in the future. I think this class can be extremely good. Keith, was Jeff, there Jeff, is there an instant, let me interrupt you real quick. Is there an in-state guy or two that you really like? I mean, I, I think, I'd love to get Cam Coleman if, if, I'm, if I'm Auburn, but a couple of those defensive line edge types. Jeremiah Beeman. Yeah. Beeman, Be, I, I've liked Beeman since last year. Um, well, Cole I, went to one of his games and said he was just flat-out dominant against uh, – maybe it was Hewitt Trustful. I can't remember. Who else? I, I interrupted you. Uh, Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson, Jeremiah Beeman. Now, see, I, I, I want to see uh, – uh, Marcus Davis, I, I think he's going to have some success here. I think the offense, especially the skill players, I have high expectations for this class as quarterback and wide receivers. And I, I really have high expectations. And if you're going to have high expectations, you're going to expect or even want Auburn to land one of Kim Coleman or Perry Thompson, one or one of the two, so, uh, if not both. Well, so Jeffrey, so Cam Coleman, for those that don't know, and I should have mentioned this earlier, he's almost 6'4". Yeah. Well, we know what 16. Hugh Freeze likes. We, we know Hugh Freeze likes big, tall receivers. But at the Under Armour camp Sunday near Atlanta, he ran almost a 4-5 at close to six foot four, And his vertical leap is like 38 to 40 inches. Okay? Boy, I mean, size, length, speed to go with it. Now, Justin He's Ross, very young, too. He's only right. 16 years old. That's right. Now, I think Justin Jeremy Ross, Johnson said he, could, he was so young that he could even be in the 2025 class if he wanted wow. to. That's how young he is. Well, you and I love Justin Ross from back in oh, the yeah. day, but you know he was a four-seven-five guy. He wasn't a four-five guy, uh, and that's probably why you know he had some injuries at Clemson. But you know, um, after a great start, he kind of his career never really went where a lot of people thought. But this guy's got all that stuff plus the speed. So um, you know, uh, you know, Kennedy Harvey, the assistant AD who we had on the show the other day, she said that. You know, this is the most important class they're going to have. And so that being ca the case, the emphasis in-state is going to be just enormous. It's a very, very good in-state class. So anyway, we got one more topic, Jeffrey. Yeah, it is with yeah this is an easy one. This is just a fun one to throw at the end. Surprises. Nope. I mean, 
how many times did a Trent Thompson show up? Or I mean, there's always you know, a guy, you're just sitting there and they just walk through the door and you're like, I had no idea this dude was coming today. So you have that kind of surprise where there's guys that are recruiting already and you know they're recruiting them and they just show up on, out of the blue, not unannounced, only unannounced to us. Auburn knows they're coming. But then right. you have that second tier, that second group of guys, which are elite guys that we don't even know they're recruiting right now. There could be a guy. Oh, yeah. There could be a guy. In, look, he worked at, he freezes and his, uh, some of his staffers worked in Virginia. Well, that's a very, very good state for talent. There could be a, a high four star guy from Norfolk that decides to come down and check it out that they know from building relationships with them. So, you know, it's just, um, you know, that's the kind of surprise that I'm more interested in. We know all the top guys they're recruiting, that we, the, the guys that we already know they're recruiting, they're all going to visit this spring. That, that, that's, we know that. Yeah. It's just a matter of nailing down the dates. I'm more interested in who are the guys I don't even know are, that they're recruiting, that they're on their radar and vice versa, that are just going to show up. And we didn't even know that we didn't even know they were on the board. And those, guys are, like, always, those are always interesting, too. Guys know? like Dylan Hip from Arizona, the tight end from Arizona, yeah. who schedules a visit. Reiner Watson, the, the I think Reiner Swanson, who I believe Keith is from. Is he from California? I think so. I think so. I think I read that one. Yeah. So. Those are the guys, um, guys that you wouldn't even think would be considering Auburn. You, you know, your boy Casey Poe from Texas is coming in. Well, you know, if you think about it, Alabama, Georgia, and even Florida have had success on the West Coast. So a lot of those kids now are more familiar with the SEC than they might have been 10, 12, 15 years ago. So if you can afford it, hey, let's go to a Georgia, Bama. Yep. Florida State, Tennessee, Auburn trip. Let's do one yep. of those things. And you never know who's going to fall in love. And you never know where they sit on other boards. And, you know, the, the truth of the matter is uh, the difference between the number six tight end and number eight tight end in the country might not be that significant. So a kid may visit other schools on that trip, and maybe those schools don't push as hard as you do. But, you know, there's individual tastes of coaches. I mean, there's all these factors in play. Um I, I know what I'm trying to say. Once again, I've, I've, I've stumbled in, in my own head here. But, you know, I'm, I always like to see who's the out of the blue, the out of the left field, like, oh, my God, I had no idea they were even recruiting this guy. And now he's visiting and he's telling us he's coming back for an official visit. So there's going to be guys like that. When, you know, some of these coaches on the staff, uh, you know, Philip Montgomery, he's recruited in, in different parts of the country. Uh, Hugh Freeze, some of his biggest players that he picked up at Ole Miss, one of them was a receiver from Illinois. So, yeah. you know, there could be some of that. There, you know, um, there's some broad appeal there. And so I feel like um, I feel like there could be some surprises. Maybe some guys, you know, I'm going to be in a camp Sunday in Orlando, uh, an Under Armour camp in Florida. There might be a surprise or two down there. That state's so loaded that you got, you know, and then you got IMG and kids from all over the country going to that school. And you don't even know who Auburn's really. We just know, let's put it this way, the, 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 the recruiting boards aren't exactly being sent to you and me on a weekly basis, right? So, so we're, you know, you and me and Cole, we're trying to have a, trying to put everything together too. So uh, yeah, again, I'm beating a dead horse, but I, I always like those surprises. Fantastic stuff, Keith. That was uh, five storylines uh, recruiting Auburn in the spring. Fantastic stuff at Auburn Live. If you're not a member, you, now is a perfect time to get signed up. Ten bucks for the next four months. That's two fifty for a month. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. You'll get your money's worth within the first days. Hey, that's about it, Keith, before we throw the flag. We appreciate everybody watching. We appreciate everybody listening. If you haven't already, go to our YouTube page, get subscribed. And uh, we'll be back uh, Thursday night or Friday with a more in-depth recruiting show. For Keith, for Zach in the back, I'm Jeffrey Lee. Man, y'all stay out of that left lane. See ya.